The AYN Odin has gotten a huge amount of hype over the past few months, but it's not quite perfect. Now let's fly through the form factor because you've probably seen this thing so much over the past few months that even if you haven't got one, you've probably got a pretty good grasp of what it's like. Starting off, the size itself is on par with something like a Nintendo Switch Lite, much bigger than a lot of the retro gaming handhelds we've seen of late, especially compared to things like the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus and the RG351 series. This is much closer in size to the RG552 and I would say it's in direct competition to consoles like that. The shape again itself is very much like a Nintendo Switch Lite, it's got a very nice curved feel to it, a contrast to the sharp edges that we've seen with some of the Ambonic consoles. Carrying on with the similarities, the button layout, the air vent placement, the input placement and even the triggers are very similar to the Nintendo Switch Lite. And this is all absolutely brilliant. It leads to a very ergonomic console and something that feels really nice to hold in your hands. But the similarities with the Nintendo Switch Lite end there and the AYN Odin takes it to the next level, giving us a really nice solid feeling console. The Nintendo Switch Lite at times feels a little bit too light, whereas the AYN Odin gives you that absolutely solid sense and feeling that this is a pure quality console. Furthermore, AYN have taken it even further beyond with some fancy lighting that go around the thumbsticks and around the edges of the console. Completely unnecessary, but it adds a really nice touch. As well as some extra buttons on the back that really help when it comes to trying to lay out your mappings for all the different controllers for the different consoles you're gonna be emulating. However, I will say that the lovely, almost suede black finish that I've got on my console is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Now the AYN Odin Odin being an Android powered device means that you have to go through all of this setup by yourself. Very similar to the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. And like I've said in previous episodes, this isn't perfect for somebody that wants to just jump in and have a retro game emulation experience. This isn't ideal if you just want to get this for somebody as a gift and just give it to them and let them start playing straight away. Somebody like a kid or a friend who doesn't have that much experience in the world of emulation. But for most people that are going to fork out for the AYN Odin, the chances are they're going to have some emulation experience. And although you have to set up everything from scratch, it's no different than trying to set up your mobile phone with a few apps and downloading some files. Any experienced user will know exactly the emulators they want to use straight away and anyone that isn't experienced a quick search on the play store will find you the emulators for any of the consoles you're looking for as is the case with a lot of these emulation devices that come with no roms at all it is a good idea to have your own collection of roms ready to just throw into the device because it takes a long time to go through downloading a lot of these games especially as these devices are now emulating much more powerful consoles that have much larger roms but the good news is that everything you need to do can be handled from the AYN Odin itself from downloading the emulators to download the ROMs and tinkering with all the settings. There is an option to use the Odin launcher which kind of simplifies the whole UI but in all honesty I find it kind of pointless because you've got to go through the whole setup to make that usable in the first place. Once you are set up though and good to go it's time to dive into the emulation experience and this is where the AYN Odin has got the biggest hype of all. It's raw power and pure capability when it comes to emulating some of the more hard to emulate consoles. Things like the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube. Not to mention even a little bit of coverage for the Nintendo Wii. Now starting from the bottom you can expect silky smooth emulation from the 8-bit generation all the way up to the PS1 but that's no big deal most retro emulation handhelds can deal with that these days. The difficulty starts to come into the Dreamcast, N64 and the PSP emulation and I'm so happy to say that the AYN Odin absolutely smashed emulation for all of these devices. All of the games I played on the Dreamcast, the N64 and the PSP were absolutely silky smooth and the N64 even handled Yoshi's Island which is a pretty tough test as we saw with Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. Now there might be some instances of games that don't work, for example Cars Race Rama on the PSP just didn't work at all but this is an issue, a known issue with the PP SSPP emulator. It's not an issue with the AYN Odin and where the emulator was built to deal with these ROMs the AYN Odin absolutely smashed it out of the park. But now we move on to the PlayStation 2 and GameCube emulation. The reason why I bought this console and the reason why I know a lot of you are interested in this console too. And although I'm happy to say that the AYN Odin is amazing at emulating the PS2 and the GameCube, it's not perfect. Now I knew this when I was purchasing the console, but I kind of hoped that the PS2 emulation was going to be a little bit better than it is. First off, let's start with the GameCube emulation. GameCube emulation is absolutely fantastic and there's 
There's so many games that run so smoothly on the A1 Odin. Games like Mario Kart, NBA Street Volume 2, Tiger Woods, NASCAR 05 all run really well, especially when you start playing with some of the settings. Now I will advise that you go for the MMJR emulator. There's a few options when it comes to GameCube. There's Dolphin, there's MMJR which is a spin-off of Dolphin, and MMJR 2 which is kind of a handheld version for Dolphin. But my best experiences came from MMJR and that had the least tinkering needed when it came to the games. That was the most plug and play if you like. Now there are a lot of experiences where I started a game and it was quite choppy and jumpy but with a few changes I was able to get really smooth emulation and I will go over what those settings are in a future episode. Taking it even further though when you load either the Dolphin or the MMJR emulator you will see that there is also support for the Nintendo Wii and of course I had to try a Wii game on this thing I mean I didn't really expect much from it but I was really really impressed. Once I managed to map the controls to something that would work well on the AON Odin considering I'm trying to replicate a nunchuck in the Wiimote as well well, it was kind of tricky, but once I got a good setup, playing through Mario Kart on the Nintendo Wii was surprisingly good. I mean, sure, there were some moments of stutter. And again, playing around with some of the settings really helped solve this. For example, changing from OpenGL to Vulcan for the graphics sorted out some graphical issues. And although this won't be my chosen way to play most Nintendo Wii games, there are definitely a few that I will be trying on the console. So when it comes to the GameCube emulation and the Nintendo Wii, I would say it's pretty damn up there and close to what I was hoping that AYN Odin would deliver. Now, talking about the PS2 it's a bit of a different story. Now it's not terrible it, it's pretty amazing to be honest but considering the price of the AON Odin and where the technology is going I would say it's still not quite at that level that I hope to get to pretty soon in the next couple of years for PS2 emulation. Now to put this into perspective so many games on the PlayStation 2 ran really really well but hardly any of them, if any of them, were perfect. There was almost always some issues of slowdown, jitteriness, or some graphical issues. And for a lot of games, and like I always say, I'm a forgiven player, a lot of the games I could comfortably enjoy them and play them, specifically sports titles as well. But there's just too many games where the quality is almost right, almost at that point where I want it to be to be able to play these games on my handheld. And sure enough, tinkering with settings can really make a difference and can elevate a lot of these games to a point where they are much more playable. But I didn't find anywhere near as much effectivity playing with the settings as I did with the GameCube. To put it into perspective, if I have the option of downloading the same game for either the PS2 or the GameCube to emulate, I will always download it for the GameCube on the AY and Odin because I just know I'm gonna get a smoother experience with that. Now I'm just editing and I do have to throw this in here. PS2 emulation on Android is not at the same level that GameCube is. It's much more in its infancy. Ether SX2, which is what we use for PlayStation 2 emulation on Android, has not been around as long as things like Dolphin and MMJR. So that does have a big part to play in how well the AY and Odin can deal with PS2 emulation. Like I said earlier, some issues will be to do with the emulators themselves as opposed to the actual hardware. And you can see that when you compare Dolphin to MMJR. But honestly, I think people get so caught up in the emulation side of these Android devices and kind of forget that it's a gaming system that covers so much more than just retro emulation. In all honesty, retro emulation is kind of just half the story. These Android devices give you access to the whole world of Android games. And of course, there's so many rubbish mobile games out there. But in all honesty, if you want to look for them, there's some amazing mobile games as well. And with a device like the AY and Odin, you know you'll be able to deal with those games. No issues, no slowdown, no frame rate issues at all. And I've had so much fun playing some of my favorite mobile games on the AY and Odin. Something we haven't touched on yet is the size of the the screen and the size of the screen really makes a difference. It makes a huge difference for all the emulated games we're looking at, especially considering that those are games designed to be played on TVs, not on a handheld device. Jumping from a 3.5 inch screen to a 5 plus makes all the difference and it means that you can really enjoy your games and be engrossed in them so much more. And this applies even more so to mobile games, games that are designed to work on screens of this size. Furthermore though, the AYN Odin is an absolutely fantastic modern generation game handheld as well, considering it can give you access to game streaming services like Game Pass, Stadia and Anstream. Again, the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus handled game streaming brilliantly, but the size of the screen did become a bit of an issue when it came to some games, especially games like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Trying to read the instructions on that tiny screen and figure out what all the controls did was pretty tricky, but on the AYN Odin with its glorious screen that is not an issue at all. And when you get yourself in a place with a great connection, you almost feel like you're playing an Xbox handheld device. That's how good this 
this is at game streaming. And this for me is so important. And like I said earlier, I feel like so many people on YouTube that cover the AY and Odin and all these other retro handheld devices kind of forget about this modern world that these devices can also tap into. And yes, I am making a lot of comparisons to the Retro Pocket 2 Plus, a much smaller and less powerful device. But this is a handheld that I find is the biggest competition for something like the AY and Odin, surely for a power to cost ratio. And this is where the real question arises. Not if the AY and Odin is awesome, because it is absolutely awesome, but is it worth the money? And is it worth it right now? If you are looking for the best retro emulation for around 200 pounds right now, the AY and Odin is your answer. And if you're the type of person that's constantly trying to jump on the latest technology, then it is a fantastic piece to jump onto. But if you're the type of person that only has one console they can afford in the next five years, and they want to get great PS2 and GameCube emulation, I would say wait a little bit. Because I feel like PS2 emulation is so close to hitting that sweet spot, with even the AY and Loki hopefully coming out towards the end of the year, with a range of devices, from the low end that could compete with the AY and Odin, all the way to the top end that will compete with the Steam Deck. So it might just be worthwhile hanging off and waiting to see how well they perform. And if you want to find out as much information about those as it's coming out, make sure you subscribe with a notification bell hit. And in the meantime, check out this awesome video right here.